Hello fellow 3D printers, I'm Jay Wall of Print That Thing, and today I'm going to teach you how to 3D model and how to 3D print flexible Halloween masks so that you can create your own for October. Yeah! I know it's pretty early to be talking about Halloween masks, but if you get started now, then by the time Halloween comes up, then your mask will be ready. So I just wanted to go ahead and give some tips and tricks for all y'all guys and girls out there who may want to create your own mask. So how this project started is I just asked myself what my biggest fear was, and it was the Night King from Game of Thrones because I had been watching it. And dude, it's pretty terrifying. Uh, so I just started modeling last year on live streams, just trying to figure out how to make this guy's face and I want to give you all a quick rundown of kind of how that happened and how it went. And hopefully you will learn some tips and tricks to make your own fears come to reality into a 3D printed Halloween mask. So the first thing you want to do is bring in a human head in Mesh Mixer and then import a cube. And the cube is going to represent the distance between your eyes or the center of your pupils. And that way, you know how large to scale up the head to kind of give you a reference of how big the mass needs to be. So put it in the middle of the box. And what I'm doing here is just making the cube or the cube's edges hit the center of the head's pupils. That way I kind of roughly know that this is the correct size and that I'll be able to see out of the mass. So I want the edges of the box right in the middle of the, the pupils. And that's how I'll know I have the right size. So once you got that, you know how big the mass is going to need to be for your head. Then you can take reference images of whatever you would like your mask to be. I'm using the Night King for Game of Thrones because I'm scared of him. And then you can take the sculpt tools and just push and pull to get the desired curves or look that you want for your mask. While in sculpt mode, you want to make sure that you turn the symmetry on. You can see this white line that's coming down the face of this model, but it's not straight. It's kind of offset, and I want it to be the line to go straight down his nose. That way, whatever you do on the left side of the face will happen on the right side of the face and vice versa. So I'm just going to reposition my model to the zero point and then turn on the symmetry. And that'll fix it so that the line is going right down the nose, right where we want it. So from here, I'm just going to fast forward and show you uh, about four hours of modeling to get the desired results. This is about four different days of live streaming. And I just want to say a special shout out to everyone who came and hung out last year while I was modeling this and uh, watched me while I was boringly designing this mask. All right, once you get done modeling, you can choose the inspector and repair the bottom so that it closes off the hole and makes it a solid mesh. Then you want to go to edit and choose hollow. And that's going to hollow out just like a real mask would be that you'd get from the store. Then you want to take the plane cut tool and cut the bottom of your mask off so that you can stick your big head in there. I did mine at an angle so that I could keep his chin and slide my head in through the back. I also chopped off a little bit of the bottom of his earlobes. That way I wouldn't need any support material right there. Once you've done that, you can bring in a cylinder to cut out the eyes. And if you hit W on the keyboard, you can see that there's a lot of polys on his face and not a lot of polys on the cylinder. So to fix that, go to the select tool, select all, and then re-mesh. And that's gonna make you know more or less triangles as you need. And then hit accept and now you can you know put these cylinders anywhere you want holes to be you know strategically place them however you want i put them in the eyes the ears the nose and then squished one down to make a mouth hole then you want to group all those cylinders together into one merged object then select the mask first hold shift and then select the cylinders and then boolean difference and that's going to cut out all of the eye holes and the nose holes and the ear holes all in one fell swoop. If you're having any issues with the boolean, try this target edge scale and that seemed to help make a smoother cutout. 
and your mask is done. I always check it with the inspector just to make sure there's no you know, crazy geometries going on. And then just auto repair all. You can see it fixed a little bit of those. And then just export out, give it a name, and you can export it as an STL. Uh, then open up your favorite slicer software. I'm using Simplify 3D. You can also download this little desk model. Uh, it was a smaller version if you don't want to print the mask. Or you can just bring in your mask. If your mask is at an angle, you can place surface on bed and then click the flat surface that we cut off in mesh, mesh, mesh mixer and that'll pop it to the bed. In the settings, you can just check in the advanced tab and you want to avoid crossing outline for travel movements. Since it's flexible filament, it's also going to slow down the speed and you want to make sure you don't have a, any rafts or supports. So this has been a year long project. I started it with a MakerBot and ended up making the mask in pieces because I had just a tiny MakerBot. So I was just like welding it together. But this is, you know, like a hard plastic because that's all I had. So I was just trying to, you know, make it work. But I wasn't really impressed with these big creases and I had to do a lot of post production, which I didn't really want to do. But then I got a CR10 from GearBest and started messing around with flexibles. So I did a little tiny print of a flexible mask just to see if it would work. And it came out really, really well. And so I thought, man, if I could just do this on a larger scale, that'd be pretty incredible and actually feel like a real mask. So the first thing I did was just printed a really, really fast, rough version of one in vase mode, which just goes around really fast, like, and it came out terrible. You can see all this nasty stringy stuff, but the purpose was just to see if the size was right, if it was going to fit on my head. So it actually worked perfectly on the first try and I was really impressed. So then I started with the 60 plus hour flexible filament mask. And uh, I actually ended up stopping halfway because uh, my computer crashed. And so it was literally 50% and then it cut out where you can see a little line somewhere around the nose area, like right around in here, the print stopped and I was devastated. But thanks to Tegal, she showed how to restart the print at the exact height and saved my print. So thanks Tegal, you can click up in the eye if you wanna see her video if you had the same problem. Uh, so check that out. I would love to see y'all's 3D printed flexible masks if y'all end up making them. Uh, you can just tag me at print that thing. If you're lazy or you're just like, I don't wanna do all that work, then uh, you can email me. Just go to the website down below in the description and let me know what you want. You can commission me to make your own Halloween mask. But we've only got, you know, about a month and a half. So get on it. So I finally got the CR10 and started playing with the extruder and got some really cool uh, settings or tips from Maker's Muse. I mean, you can go to the eye up here in the corner if you want to go check out his channel. He's an amazing, amazing 3D print channel and gave me these awesome settings and I dialed it in for the CR10 and you can get uh, my flexible settings for the CR10 down below if you want to do these long flexible prints. This was printed with no raft, no supports and came out pretty good. You will get little bitty strings you know, if it's going from one point to another, uh, but you can just trim them off. It's no, no biggie really. My lover lady also painted the mask. It was printed in black and then she spray painted it and then just did some like highlight paints with blue and white and uh, black to give it kind of this look. So I'm sure you could use any types of paints, but that's just what we had. So that's what we used. But yeah, check it out. It's pretty cool. Thanks for watching. Hopefully y'all get inspired to make your own Halloween costumes. It's a real, it's a lot of fun. Uh, please share it if you do and uh, subscribe if you like 3D printing. If you want to support the channel even further, uh, you can become a patron and join the $1 Holla Club. Have a good rest of the weekend. Enjoy the season finale and I'll see y'all next week. Peace.